What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. We're still working on the white truck. We got some things to fix today. What I'm gonna start with is trying to figure out why this VSV is ticking so loud. Like I said previously in the last video, I know they make noise. They all make noise, but this thing is extremely loud. So I think what I'm gonna do is swap this one out for a different one. So this is actually the 3.0 sensor that's in it right now. I have the 3.4 sensor, so I'm going to swap that one in and see if that changes anything. So here's the 3.4 sensor. Really the only difference I see is these barbs, the ports are a lot bigger. So I bought some adapters just to adapt to the little three millimeter vacuum line. But another thing I noticed is it's on a rubber, like a rubber grommet and that's how it's mounted. Um, I think that is kind of, it's an isolator. So it kind of isolates that noise. Cause like I said, they all make noise. That's what they do. But this thing is loud. So what I'm going to do is swap this one in and we'll try it out. We'll go drive it, get it warmed up. Cause it only does it when it's warm. So we got to get out there, drive it a little bit, maybe go do a couple burnouts in the field, get this thing up to temp and see if it quiets down at all. If it does, I'll just mount it basically the same way. It's just a screw right into this. So I'll just screw it right onto that bracket I have there, but we'll see what it does when we swap it. All right, she's very temporarily mounted. So let's go drive this thing a little bit, get it warmed up and see if that tick is at all quieter. Guys, we have a winner, so it's functioning right now. I don't know if you'll be able to hear it on the camera. I'll put it right next to it. It's still uh, making a little bit of a pulsating noise, but that is exactly what it should sound like. You can't hear it in the cab. I can barely hear it just, you know, standing right here. So I'm gonna get it back in the shop. We'll uh, replace this valve, and we're gonna keep this rubber isolator in there because I feel like that helps keep it quiet as well. All right, there it is all finished up. So that should be good to go now. I'm gonna leave that as is. The next thing we gotta do is another one of you guys, Mr. D. Bryant, username, sent me over a complete air box and intake setup. So we're gonna get this thing opened up and we're gonna ditch this crappy Chinese intake. There it is boys, looks like it's all there. So let's rip this stuff off. We'll have to swap that mass airflow over to the air box. All right guys, I'm gonna bolt this air box down. So I'm gonna use that mount there and then there's a mount here too, which is gonna end up kind of up underneath that fuse box. And it'll sit right about like that. And then this mount I'm not gonna use, so I'll probably cut that one off. Two mounts on there should definitely be enough. So 
I'm going to drill some holes in, bolt that thing on, and then all we got to do really is hook up that vacuum to the pressure regulator, and then there's just this one big one in the back there, and we are done. There we go guys, looking amazing. The only thing I need is a longer hose for this right here. So I gotta go pick something up for that, but everything else is hooked up. This looks so much better, and I'm sure it's gonna work a lot better too. I'm a big fan of factory intakes. They, they're they designed for the motor, so it's gonna work like it should. So I just gotta find a hose for that back vacuum line, and then we'll be done with this whole intake. Well, the intake definitely seems like it helped it run a little bit smoother, but it's still kind of just lopy at an idle. I think I might pull the idle air control valve off and make sure that's all clean. Because I know those, like a lot of you have said, those can act a little funny. So I think that's the next step in getting the idle to smooth out. Other than the idle, it runs really, really good. Smooth, no backfiring, no nothing weird. So I think it's something to do with that control valve. All right guys, we're gonna rip this whole throttle body off, clean the whole throttle body, and then we're gonna pull that idle air control valve off. It's just so much easier to get to the idle air control valve. Plus, I just wanna go through the whole throttle body and clean that up. So, I just went to Napa, did a little auto parts store, got a couple gaskets here. So, let's rip that thing off, clean it up, and see how bad it is. I, I've seen a few videos of people taking those off, and the idle air control valve is just completely packed full of crap. So. Let's get this off and see what it looks like. All right, we got the throttle body off, so idle air control valve is this big deal right on the bottom. So four screws, we'll pull that off and we'll see how dirty it is inside of there. All right guys, so I'm gonna do a quick test. So there's three pins on this connector. The middle one's a ground. And if you hook power 12 volts up to one either side, either pin on each side it'll turn if you hook it up this side it'll turn one way if you hook power up to the other side this cam should turn the other way and the cam i'm talking about is right there you can see that the shiny part the round cam that basically adjusts how much air comes through the valve and 
into the motor to uh, you know essentially stabilize the idle. So what I got is a battery hooked up here with a uh, hot and a ground. So I'll hook the ground to the middle pin and then positive I'll go on on both of the other pins and watch that cam and make sure it'll turn both ways. All right guys, did that test and it seems like it's working pretty good. So it's turning both ways. So I'm gonna go through, clean everything with some carb cleaner. There it is guys, all cleaned up. So it really wasn't that dirty. I'm not convinced that that was causing much of an issue. Usually when you see them, they're all gummed up and that cam doesn't even turn. So either way, we know it's clean. We can mark that off the list of things to do. But anyway, we'll throw it back on and see if there's any change. All right guys, there it is, all finished up. So let's get it warmed up, see how it runs, and hopefully that idle will be a lot smoother. All right, we got it all warmed up. So I don't really see a whole lot of change. I mean, it's not like this thing idle is like super rough. The motor itself sounds like it is nice and smooth, but I mainly hear it in the exhaust. So this is the exhaust I was telling you about how it's kind of like thumping. It doesn't sound like really smooth. I know these three fours idle a little bit weird, but that seems a little much, but I don't know. It, everything else with the motor runs really, really good. Throughout the gears, throughout the RPMs, it runs smooth. Like I said, the motor itself, listening to the motor, it sounds really smooth out of idle. So it could just be the exhaust and how, uh, just kind of how it sounds, I guess. All right guys, I'm gonna call it for this video. So it seems like a lot of you are pretty familiar with this motor. Let me know if that idle sounds weird. To me, it sounds a little bit weird, but like I said, I know these things have a kind of a strange idle sound. And it, like I said, the motor itself sounds and looks like it runs really, really smooth. But then when you hear the exhaust, it's kind of a uh, rough sounding. So I don't know, that might just be the way it is. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. Give it a big thumbs up, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.